Hello everyone and welcome to the opening episode of my walkthrough of The Amazing Spider-Man. For the people who know me already and are wondering why I'm doing this instead of my usual analysis, please refer to the related blog post I've published on iwago 3D. You can find the link in the description. I have everything explained there, but rest assured this does not mean I won't be doing in-depth analysis anymore. I simply thought it was a good idea to fill the gaps between my analysis by publishing the gameplay sessions I usually record while working on them. Walkthroughs like this one should basically allow me to provide information about how move controls work in move compatible games sooner than usual ahead of the actual analysis. If you like the sound of that, please support this project by the means YouTube provides. So let's begin this walkthrough of the Amazing Spider-Man by looking at the settings first. In the main game settings there is an option to disable the web rush cursor. The web rush cursor is basically your on-screen reticle, which is fixed in the middle of the screen when playing with the DualShock 3, but not so when playing with the move. In that case the web rush cursor floats around the screen, so setting this option to anything other than always is not a good idea. The audio settings don't provide any move related options of course, but let me turn on the subtitles just in case I need to talk over in game dialogues. Now in controls you can take a look at the control scheme, which as you can see is based upon the usual navigation plus move controller combo. Notice how you need to hold L1 to control the camera. I'll elaborate on that as we get into actual gameplay. When using the move, camera sensitivity is higher than the DualShock 3 one, which is good, but comes with a rather narrow acceleration area, so you want to keep this near the low end of the bar to avoid spinning out of control. Finally, in the move controller sections of the settings you can change the size of the dead zone. The smallest dead zone is about the same size as the Killzone 3 one, but bigger than the Infamous 2 one. I like the camera to react as quickly as possible, so I will shrink this as much as possible. Ok, now let's check the calibration process, which is rather odd. First of all you are asked to press X on the controller you want to pair with the move. This is good for when you have multiple controllers turned on laying around. Next comes the part where you have to hold the move still pointed towards the camera and press the move button. Usual move calibration stuff. What's unusual though is that the on-screen cursor shows up right away, before having aimed at the targets located at the corners of the screen which is how you actually provide the data about screen size and position and align the cursor to the move accordingly. What this means is that what you want to do here is basically ignore the on-screen cursor and proceed by aiming the move itself at those targets. It won't align perfectly but it's better than having to point at the camera when you want to aim at the center of the screen. There are other issues to point out but I will elaborate on those in my analysis. For now let me just say that if you want to use the DualShock instead of the navigation controller you can do that just fine as long as when prompt to press start at the title screen you do so on the move rather than the DualShock 3. Alright enough talking, let's start the game on a normal difficulty and see how it plays with the move. Peter, what are you doing here? I'm here to get you out of this asylum. But you put me here, and with good reason. I can't... I know, it's crazy, but time's running out, Connors. Something bad has happened. Something really bad. Okay, we are about to see the opening sequence now, where we are introduced to the camera control system, which involves holding down the L1 button while tilting the move. You will notice the on-screen cursor is missing, I'll elaborate on that shortly after the sequence. Progress. Hey there. Nature hey. <laughs> Thanks for coming with me, Pete. You're brave. We're gonna have to be careful here. I'm not supposed to be here after hours. I hope it's better than the first time I snuck in. That was not fun. We're not sneaking. We're investigating. Weird things happen here after hours. Stuff that Dr. Smythe's trying to get rid of. He's not a bad guy, you know? He wants to turn this company around. Yeah, that's what the video said. So, what exactly is rotten in the state of Oscorp? I think they're continuing Dr. Connor's work. Cross-species experiments. Come on. Whoa, whoa now. Like, making more lizards? Making more everything. I I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out tonight. Oscorp has the geniuses and the resources. 
Why can't it be a benefit to people? That's why I came back. And Dr. Smythe wants to change things. <laughs> I know. His brilliant research will usher in a new era for all humanity. Huh. Okay, just wait a second. Progress. Nature to man. Man to machine. The path to our future. Well, we're definitely safe out here. Because we'll never get in. We're in. The Oscorp of today is evolving. Keep your head down. Under the direction of Dr. Wow! Look at all this! I knew Dr. Smythe was the nanobot guy, but I had no idea he had big bots, too. I can't believe you get to play with this stuff every day. <laughs> it never gets old. Whoa, what is that? Oh my god. This could be proof they're continuing Connor's work. I'm totally to blame, Doc. I, uh, I'm amazed at what you've done with Oscorp. I, when I heard about the changes you were making, you know, uh, nanobots, I wanted to see them for myself. You've worked with Connors, right? Funny finding you here now as I waste my time trying to dispose of these cross species. So this is a cross species? You promised me that all of Connors' work was over. But, uh, how many more do we keep here? I told you the truth, Gwen. The experiments have stopped, just not as early as I'd hoped. No more humans turning into animals like Connors did. But what you see here is what happens when an animal gets a nice dose of human DNA. Here, follow me. I trust you'll keep everything you see in the strictest confidence. Another one of these cross species? This is crazy. The lizard almost destroyed the city. Well, what rational mind would continue to create these things? Changing the ethics of a large corporation takes time. Now, some scientists argue that these pathetic creatures have some benefit, but they lost that argument. As of tonight, these cross species disappear. We're shipping them to our bio lab for safe disposal. Out of sight, out of mind. Uh, has this thing eaten today? It always looks like that. They went farther with Connor's work than we realized. The species in this room are incredibly dangerous and highly contagious. Hence the containment units. Hey, where'd he go? Come on out, little fella. That little fella is a walking disease. Any direct contact with it leads to infection. Infection leads to death. Or becoming a cross-species yourself. I want to keep you human, Parker. Let's keep moving. Is there a cure? Well, for these things, no. They were never human to begin with. They were born in a petri dish. For the poor humans it infects, unfortunately not. Attempts to develop an antidote have been unsuccessful. I don't want to seem cruel, but you have to understand, that thing is pure vermin. Creatures like this brought Europe to its knees with the plague. Acts like that when it's around other. I mean, <clears throat> other handsome guys like me? I'm used to it. Unlike robots, biological creatures are unpredictable. I much prefer things I can control. Unpredictable, huh? What is that? An iguana? This has to be the strangest office tour I've ever been on. Don't worry, Parker. Our next stop is the nanobot lab. Once you see it, uh, excuse me, Dr. Smythe. I need someone with special clearance to help me take this down to B-Sector. Oh, I don't have time for this. Uh, Gwen, 
Maybe it's a good thing you're here. You can deal with some of this bureaucratic nonsense. A punishment for uh, trespassing. Go with him and catch up with us when you're done. Uh, Doctor, I think I'll escort her. You know, make sure she doesn't get eaten. <laughs> I understand. The beast is as enthralled by beauty as man is. Meet me in the lab when you're done. And don't wander. It's an order, Miss Stacy. Sure, Dr. Smythe. Come on, Pete. I'm uh, great meeting you, Doctor. Likewise, partner. It, is that... You gotta be kidding me. That's taking things a little far, isn't it? It's a terrible legacy. But Dr. Smythe says we're putting it in the past. I believe him. What the what? What did you do to it? I... I didn't do anything. Peter, I think it senses your blood. It knows. It's clearly reacting to something. I've never... Oh my god! It's breaking the glass! I can help. So here we can finally see what the cursor looks like and use it to aim at Gwen in order to save her with a web rush, which you perform by pressing L2. Gwen, are you okay? Uh, I'll be fine, thanks. Get me to the quarantine area. I can help you save the other scientists from there. Now that we are in control of Spider-Man, you will notice the cursor has disappeared again. This is because the cursor is originally intended as an indicator of whether or not you can web rush across the environment. When carrying an NPC, like in this case, you can't web rush. Hence why there is no on-screen cursor. They've been programmed to defend us against cross species, which I guess you technically are. So, yeah, watch out, Pete. Oh my god, did you no. see that? Oh, oh, get you out of here. Oh. It's not working. It got me. Web swinging is very simple, you just hold the move trigger to swing in the direction you are looking at or the one towards which you are tilting the analog stick. You can also ascend while web swinging by holding down the move button. If these things get out of us? I don't want to think about what ifs right now. Every robot has to attack me? Okay, this is our first combat sequence. Now we are in full control of Spider-Man, which means we get to see the on-screen cursor again, since we can now web rush. Before fighting though, I want to show you how the camera behaves depending on whether or not you are holding L1. When you do so, you can easily look around you while moving, as you would expect. But this also forces you to use another finger or to release the camera in order to perform a web strike, as you see here. 
Letting go L1 puts the camera behind Spider-Man no matter what, making it problematic to check your surroundings. This is not an issue while attacking since the camera automatically shows the action from the best angle, but having to keep L1 held down to look elsewhere at your discretion hampers one of the advantages of having the camera mapped to the wrist, that is, being able to look freely while operating the face buttons. Basically, there is no point in ever releasing L1. Okay, Gwen, I'm a light packer. Time to get out of here. Luckily, in web brush mode, you can control the camera without having to hold L1 along with L2. Those glowing silhouettes indicate spots you can web brush to, but you can actually web brush wherever you want. It's worth noting that you can perform a web brush by simply tapping L2. Entering the web brush mode is useful when you are in mid-air as it slows down time, making it easier to select the destination of your web brush. It goes without saying that the pointer-based web brushing feels great, the precision it provides adding to the feeling of being Spider-Man. Oh, and uh, when the cursor turns red, it means you can't web brush in that direction. Find another way. Right! Oscorp security system. Quarantine's on the other side. Stay here, Gwen. I'll come back to get you. Okay, here we have to open that door ahead and reach it without going through those sensors. Doing so doesn't harm you, but shuts the door, as you can see here. So what we need to do to get to that door while it's open is use the web brush to pass through the hole in the security system. Here we are introduced to the web shooting. The footage is self-explanatory about how it works, the only thing you might not notice immediately being that your shots are assisted so that they land on the target closer to the cursor. This seems to be exactly the same assist in place when using the DualShock 3. In that case you actually need it more since you can't aim while pressing the circle button. At this point I've gotten sick of having to hold down L1 to control the camera and decided to modify the controls accordingly. Thanks to this highly sophisticated modification, I can now control the camera at will without having to sacrifice a finger. It turns out this works very well, so well indeed that uh, from now on I will be playing the whole game with this modification. It is indeed rather odd that the developers felt the need to implement the wall L1 thing in the first place, because as you will see throughout this walkthrough, there are no game-breaking consequences to having the camera constantly under your control. It actually feels much better. Shaking the controller triggers a web retreat, which has Spider-Man automatically web brush out of trouble. 
You can use triangle to do the same thing, but I find shaking the controller to be more effective in battle as you can retreat in the middle of a combo without having to move your thumb away from the buttons you are using to fight or dodge. In case it wasn't obvious enough already, the combat system is heavily inspired by the one engineered by Rocksteady for their Batman series. You press X to dodge rather than triangle, but other than that it basically works identically, well, almost identically. Increasing the multiplier, which allows to perform signature moves, is easier since it only resets when you get hit or waits too long before performing an attack. Missing a target, for example, doesn't reset the multiplier as it is the case in Batman. Okay, Gwen. I'm getting you to safety. Thanks, Pete. I need to get the others before this really gets out of hand. Pete, I think we both know that this is already out of hand. Dr. Smythe will have some answers. Find him. I'll try, but Gwen, I have to ask. What's gonna happen? To you? I don't know, but it's not going to be good. I'm infected, Pete. We all are. You remember what happened to Connors. This only leads to one thing. But... But what about the antidote? If it worked before... Then... Connors was exposed to an earlier strain. You couldn't even call it a virus back then. It's evolved, mutated. There's no antidote to cure this. What if I stop all the cross species? There's no question they should be stopped, but even if they are, there's, there's still a risk that the virus will spread. Gwen, stay calm. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you, okay? We'll figure it out. I'll find Dr. Smythe and the others. Hopefully, it's not too late. Wait, Peter. Take the Oz phone on the table. The what? It's the name of the Oscorp phone. It's still a prototype, but at least I'll be able to call you. Okay. I'll get back as soon as I can. The Oscorp phone Gwen was referring to is an all-purpose device which provides a mini-map in the open space area of Manhattan, various information about the game progress and, more importantly, a mean to upgrade Spider-Man. The upgrade system is a bit confusing at first as it is organized into two separate pages, housing upgrades you can unlock in different ways. The tech upgrade screen you see here lists abilities tied to your gadgets, that is, the web shooters and the suite. Here you spend experience points accumulated during the course of the various chapters. The character upgrade screen instead shows the upgrades tied to Spider-Man physical abilities. Here you spend points earned upon completing objectives. Did Smythe make it? Yes, I got him and the other scientists to the quarantine. But they're all infected. And the cross species? Where are they? I tried to stop them, but they escaped. Well, you caught me, the lizard. Why should these creatures be any different? Uh, you have no idea. Okay, now we are about to enter the open space area of Manhattan which is where the web swinging and the web rushing mechanics really shine. someone who can help. Be careful, Pete. Dr. Smythe is programming his robots to capture all cross species. That may include you. Whoa! What is that? Huh. I think I'm gonna 
gonna love this phone. The combination of web swinging and web rushing allows to navigate the city in a very fluid manner, enhancing the feeling of being as amazing as Spider-Man is. Web rushing in the open space works like we have seen earlier inside the Oscorp building. Again, the glowing silhouettes indicate suggested landing spot within Spider-Man Reach. All you have to do to get there is point and release L2. As I said earlier, you can also ignore the silhouettes and web rush wherever you want. You can simply point and click your intended destination, even if it's mid-air, and Spider-Man will automatically perform the acrobatics needed to get there. Doing so by simply tapping L2 rather than holding it down allows to smoothly web rush around the environment without poses. You can also deviate from your current web rush at any time by simply aiming the cursor in a different direction and tapping L2 which is much easier to do with my modification since you don't have to keep L1 held down in the process. There is more to be said about how both the web swinging and the web rushing work, but I will talk about that in the next episode. For now, let's finish this one by heading towards our final destination. The creature has stopped its rampage in the center of the park. Now that we can have a good look, we can confirm it's not the same reptilian creature that recently terrorized Manhattan. Strangely, it's... During boss fights like this one, the camera is normally oriented towards the threat, so you can move around without ever losing track of it. Of course, holding down L1 disengages this camera assist, but as you can see, it's fairly easy to keep the enemy in view regardless. So no game-breaking consequences to my modification to the port here.
Here you can see the cursor trembling severely as I spunk the circle button to web shoot towards those fans. This is not a problem due to the assist I've mentioned earlier when we were in the Oscorp building. Regardless of the assist, it's obviously much easier to hit those targets with the move compared to when using the DualShock 3, especially when you are busy web rushing or web swinging around. You basically feel more agile and in control of the situation at all times. And done. That was a spectacular boss fight, wasn't it? During in between chapter loading screens, you can scroll through the so called New York City thoughts and read comments from the New York citizens related to what just happened. A nice touch. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of my walkthrough of the Amazing Spider Man. If you did, please like this video or subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. See you in the next episode then. Ciao!